Thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. You bet. Uh, thank you, Scott, for that introduction. Uh, like you said, I am Trooper Adam Vernon with Long Highway Patrol. I've been a uh, state trooper since 2007. And I do appreciate you guys uh, inviting me to come and talk. Um, we always like to give these classes you know, to wherever, wherever we can for safety reasons. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things here, and then I'll open the floor for questions. If you guys have any law questions, anything like that, any good stories, anything that you want to <laughs> share, I mean, you know, I'm always uh, able to. Hopefully, if I can't make up an answer, or if I don't know the answer, I'll make one up. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it'll be right or not, but we'll go with it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, winter preparation because unfortunately winter's coming and we know what that means. Lots of snow and icky cold. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some new laws that are going to affect uh, everybody. There are some pretty significant ones that uh, was just passed um, that are going to go into effect here, or well, went to effect July 1st um, as well. Um, Okay, so uh, we're going to start with this uh, winter preparation uh, with our vehicles, winter driving, uh, that kind of stuff, like I said, because realistically we're only a few weeks out, you know, it could be snowing, you know, I mean, we all know how Wyoming is. Anytime after the 1st <laughs> That's right, September. anytime after the 1st of September. Yeah, I, I keep telling him I have an eight-year-old boy who loves, you know, Halloween. And I told him, you know, back when I was a kid, it would snow all the time. He's been lucked out last few years. You know, he's been able to trick or treat in shorts, but <laughs> said, that might not be the, <laughs> the case all the time. Um, but anyway, uh, so a lot of times what we always try and tell uh, people the best way to get ready for winter driving uh, is with vehicle maintenance. Um, there's lots of <clears throat> keys that uh, will help us uh, to help uh, maneuver through snow, ice, wind, all that fun stuff that comes along with living here in Wyoming. First thing that we always tell people to make sure uh, functions well in their car is their tires. Okay, that's that's that is number one. If if you can imagine everything else is second, you know, I mean it's second case after your tires because that's really the only thing that's I mean, that's touching the ground. You know, on the average width of a tire is only the the width of your hand. Okay, so you know a little, a little bit wider, but you know, if you can imagine that's all that's keeping you guys, you know, on the on the road itself. So we always want to make sure that the tread is well on the tires. Okay, here we go. You know, they, uh, they have snow uh, tires that have studs in them that help uh, provide a little bit of extra grip. You um, know, stuff that, uh, uh, tires are the main key. If we, if we can get to make sure our tires are doing Studs well. allowed in Wyoming? They are. Yep, yep, you can have studs. All year or just uh... Yep. Hmm. yep, yep, there's no law saying you can't have that. Um, a lot of times, uh, chains aren't. But you know, if there's a chain law in effect, if you're driving a, a semi truck that requires chains, if you're in the mountainous regions, uh, you have the have pullouts where you can chain up, um, and then as soon as you're out of that chain area, then you, then they're required to take them off because they do damage the road. Uh, but stud, studded tires are good to go. So we don't uh, on our we don't have them on our vehicles just because we travel at such high speeds. You know, and I don't know if you guys know how that would be, but <laughs> having studs fly down your road. Uh, so tires, uh, studded tires are great, um, you know, make sure that your tread, you know, the common rule of thumb is if you put a penny in your tire, and if you can see Abraham Lincoln's top of his head, you need new tires. Okay, the tread's not, not good enough on there, so that's just, that's just a little tidbit for them. Are blowouts a problem? I mean, do you still see? They are. We see them more in the summertime than in the winter, just because of the hot roads. You see a lot of semis with the retreads. Mm -hmm. You're out there and you see, them, we call them gators, but they are, they do some damage if you hit them and you don't see them. Yeah. But yeah, and unfortunately, we just see a lot of blowouts. Um, most, like I said, mostly in the summertime with just, you know, how hot the pavement gets in the tires. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question on the blowouts. If you do have a blowout, I know a lot of times we tell young drivers that if you do feel Blot. Don't slam on your brakes. Don't do hard steering. Anything like that. You know, we want to make sure we just ease and slow down. Because if we do that, we all know what happens there. Then I get called. There's a crash. And there's, mm -hmm. It's bad news. Uh, next thing, what we're uh, what we want to push home. We got to get them a better. Yeah. <laughs> Is that one drying out too? It's all right. Okay. We'll, we'll make it work. No, I'll just. He's got, uh, he's got to learn to hold it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with my hands too much. Uh, is our windshield. Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's, we have our tires, and then we got to be able to see. 
So we want to make sure that our windshield, uh, we can see out of that, there's not a lot of cracks on it. I'm sure you guys, when you're out driving around, you see people that look like they put a brick through it and it's just a big old uh, spider web, spider web on that. That is illegal, they can be pulled over for that, they can be, uh, they can be cited. Uh, you have to have a clear field of vision of that. Um, along with the windshield there, we want to make sure we have good uh, windshield wipers for obvious reasons. You know, we want to make sure your blades are new, they're ready to go, they can get the snow off. Um, it's not illegal not to have functioning windshield wiper blades, but obviously you want to have them because then if you can't see out your windshield, then it's not uh, good for you. Uh, make sure your defrost is working well, your front and rear defrosts. It's a good way to keep the, keep the snow and the ice off of uh, off your vehicle. I don't know if, uh, we do a lot of nighttime driving, but make sure that our headlights are functioning as well. Um, if we, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll have one headlight out, or the bulb is starting to go out, so they're starting to dim down a little bit. Um, we all know how early it gets dark here, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I mean, it'll be 5.30 and it'll be dark time, you know, in December. So when we're out driving around, I want to make sure that our headlights are, uh, that our headlights are fully functional on there as well. Uh, See those... Are the blue lights, are they illegal or are not? They are not. I wish they were, because they are so bright. They are. Oh, they are so bright. The only blue light that we can't have is, you see those teenagers that have the blue lights under the cars? As they're driving around at night, they can't have that. Really? But, yep. The blue lights that are to the front. Yeah. Completely legal. Right. Unfortunately, why they're so bright. Mm -hmm. So bright. Those uh, those products that you see, where you spray the stuff on your headlights and wipe it off, and it's mm -hmm. supposed to clear up. Are those, do those work? Are they a good idea? Do they? You know, I uh, I don't know. I've never uh, I've never used them. If there's anything that can make your lights so you can see better, that's what we're looking. You know, and then there is a law saying you can't have your highs on 500 feet, approximately 500 feet as you're coming at somebody, and then 300 feet from the rear. So we want to make sure if you're on a highway, interstate like that, you want to make sure that we're dimming our headlights down uh, for that. But if the, if you can, uh, if you're on just your regular headlights there, and that they are a little uh, uh, foggy, you know, they, they do sell products like that that can clear that off there. I don't know if they work or not. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff out there that's hit and miss, but. Uh, you know, if there is something that, that helps uh, get that light out there, that's what we're looking for there. Because those delineator posts, I'm sure you guys have driven in Wyoming when you can't see anything but the delineator post. Those are bad days. But those, I mean, if that's all you can see, you know, those reflective dots on there. That's You want to make sure that those guys are working for you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, a lot of people ask uh, about emergency kits. Do I need one? Are they a good idea to have? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. We want to have an emergency kit in our vehicle because you never know if you're going to break down. You never know what's going to happen when you're out, out on the highway there. Uh, you know, there. There's not a set silver bullet saying this is what you have to have in an emergency kit. There are some things obviously that you want to have. You, know, you want to have some water. Have a blanket. You want to have? You know, I mean, there, there's just a plethora of stuff that you can have on there. You think emergency food, snacks, just enough to get you by until we can get to you. Somebody can get out there and get you off the highway. So, absolutely, emergency kits. Does everybody in here have one in their vehicles? Limited. Yes. Limited. Okay. Okay. That's always a, that's always a great thing to have, and they don't take up very much room. You can go down to to uh, any of the auto parts stores and buy one. Uh, you know, they have jumper cables in there, they have reflective stuff, you know, they said, have signs that say broken down, send help, anything like that, because, you know, cell phones are getting better reception out here, so, you know, but there's still some places where your cell phone's not going to work. And so, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we know that you're broken down, something's going on there. Um, and the big thing is, if you do break down, stay with your vehicle. Okay, don't go hmm. running off, don't go, uh, you know, walking out trying to find help. That's going to be that's a windbreak for you. If you're not out there in the snow, you're not out there in the cold. It's going to get cold in your car, but I'd rather have you cold in your car than out walking around and the wind's blowing on you and everything. So stay in your vehicle. If we get there, we see your vehicle and you're there. Perfect. If not, then we got to try and find you. So I think we always tell people on that. Um, any other questions on winter preparation with your vehicle? 
I always make sure my windshield washer will work well because, as you say, visibility is a big deal, and you get the slush coming at you all the time. Oh, absolutely, so I, absolutely. That's one of the biggies in my world is make sure that's working. Correctly. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point there. You know, we're out there and the plows are doing their job. They're doing a great job. Unfortunately, when you're out there with the plows, they put sand and dirt down that, which helps you know with traction and stuff. But then it comes up on your windshield, so you'll go and you wash your car so many more times during the winter just because you can't see. Great point with that uh, windshield wiper fluid on there. So make sure that that's uh, it's filled up. That stuff's really cheap. You get that two dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. part, so that's a that's a real great uh, prevention uh, thing on there as well. Thank you. That's a good point. Um, Anyway, uh, winter driving, we all know, uh, you know, we got a lot of experience winter driving, so I don't have to preach to the choir on that, but um, the biggest thing that we, uh, we try and push home on winter driving is just go slower and stop sooner. You know, uh, obviously, when we're out there on ice and slush, slush is probably the worst surface condition that we can have because slush pulls your vehicle around. You know, ice is right there. At least with ice, most people are driving slow. Slush is, I say most, but that's why I have a job, because <laughs> <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but slush, uh, slush is, is going to be right up there as well. So. What's, what's the best way to find road conditions before you head out of the house? Sure, that's a great question. Uh, uh, the YDOT, which is the Wyoming Department of Transportation, has a couple of services out there that are a great resource if you want to see how current road conditions are. And they even have webcams up throughout the whole state and they're getting more webcams as we go. Um, the webcams gives you a real-time image of what the road conditions look like in that area. And they have, oops. Lyle Road, isn't that the? Yep, yes sir, that's yeah. the one. Oh, well, I've just pulled it up right now. <laughs> We've got webcams by route, yep. Wyoming travel. Yep. Yep. So that's just not, not just in the winter, but it's, 365 days a year. 365 days a year. Yep. If this uh, young gentleman here wanted to see what the road looked like out at uh, Hell's Half Acre, you call me young gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have his eyes checked later. <laughs> uh, if you if you wanted to see what it looked like at Hell's Half Acre, if you want to see what it looked like at Independence Rock, you can just pull up the webcam right there, and it give you a real time footage even today on August 25th. So rain, fog, yep. whatever you'd know. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you would know. And they and they have those, uh, there's a lot. There's probably more on I-80 than any other area in the state. However, they are starting to branch out and get more webcams up around the state. Uh, if you don't have access to a uh, to a smartphone like that, if you're out there, you can call 511, and they'll give you the road uh, conditions as well. So just give that phone number a call, and they'll tell you uh, if you want road conditions for the northwest, push one, northeast, press two, so it's an automated telephone service that gets you down to the location that you're looking for. And are those pretty reliable? They update they them are. frequently? They are, yep. Yep, we, uh, we have the, uh, at our command center down there in Cheyenne, which is where all this is, is located at. There's uh, our dispatch, which is the highway patrol, and then the next room over is maintenance. And so anytime somebody calls in something to maintenance, oh, there's deer out there. <laughs> <laughs> those are really skinny legs on the kids. But uh, if anybody calls in any road conditions, uh, they call down to uh, the to maintenance down there in Cheyenne, and they instantly uh, update the the road surface conditions in that area. So we have guys out 80. I 80 has 24 hour coverage, uh, and then anywhere north of I 80 is is 20 hour coverage. So there's four hours during the middle of the night where there's no plows out. Unfortunately, there's no maintenance units out. So when they come out at four in the morning. Uh, and they, they've got a lot of work to do, you know, to clean up all that snow. But unfortunately, I wish we had 24-hour coverage, especially here, just because this town is a good-sized town here and there's a lot of traffic. Uh, unfortunately, we just have 20-hour coverage. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a great resource. Uh, in fact, we, uh, we as troopers use this a lot, too, just because of that uh, webcam feature. We can see where we're going out to, what it's looking like. Um, and that's updated. Those webcam pictures are updated every couple of minutes. So that's definitely. If I had a, a preference, this would be the one that I would use <laughs> just to see the just to see the pictures. Good question. Okay. 
We were talking about um, the 80 mile an hour speed limit before we started up today. And what is that? Is that about a year old? Something like yeah, that? Yeah. 14 uh, months, 14, yeah, 15? In there, uh, they had to do a study. Uh, we'll, we'll, this is a good uh, transition here. We'll start talking about new legislation. Uh, yeah, it's only a couple, uh, I mean, it's not even a couple years old. Um, I don't know if what your guys' reaction is to the 80 mile an hour. I've heard about 60, 40, 60% 60 of people don't like it. 40% of the people do like it. I can tell you this, uh, just from my experience out there driving, 80 now means 85. Okay, unfortunately, that's just the norm now. Everybody's doing that much faster. And what they don't realize is when you're going that much faster, that's that much more energy your vehicle's exerting, that much more ground you're covering. And it cuts down on reaction time, action time, all that stuff. And that's just simple physics. You know, I mean, an object going faster is gonna have more energy, more momentum, more power if it does crash. Uh, so unfortunately we have seen, um, I think we're at 93 fatals so far this wow. year. Um, so we are we are a high amount of fatals uh, around the state with, uh, with crashes. Granted some of that's alcohol related, a lot of that is speed. So, you know, it's, we, uh, you know, I, uh, I teach a class to teenage drivers and uh, it's called Live 25, you know, that's because that's the most dangerous age group of drivers is the drivers that are under the age of 25. And we tell them, we always tell them, slow down and wear your seatbelt. Those are the two things that we really try to push home. And the last class I taught, uh, a young girl asked, well, if you're telling us to slow down and you're telling us to slow down and slow down, yet they keep raising the speed limit. I said, you know, that's a great question and I don't have an answer to that. All I can tell you is just, you know, this is the basic physics. This is what happens when a vehicle is going that fast. Um, speaking of that, one of the biggest new legislation uh, bills that they passed uh, this last session uh, is on the two-lane highways. Uh, most, uh, unless it's in a superintendent zone, uh, like out by the airport, it's only 55. Uh, you know, through some areas down in town, it's 40. But if you're going to Shoshone, once you got past the airport, <coughs> the speed limit goes to 65. Now they passed a new legislation that raises that speed limit to 70 miles per hour. Wow. Oh, I didn't we can now go to, to uh, we can go to Riverton, 70 now? No. <laughs> wow. 70 miles per hour. Okay, sounds good in theory, but one thing that we always want to tell people is, you know, this is your, this is your two lane highway. You know, if you're going this way, you're going this way. It's not like the interstate, where the interstate, that's one direction. Okay, they're all going northbound, they're all going southbound. This, it's 70, because now, just like 80, now this means 75. Okay, so now, because everybody now, for the most part, you know, I mean, it's 69, 70 miles an hour and a 65. Okay, that seems to be the norm. Now, so, once they get done with the study, and figure out where they can put these 70 mile an hour speed limit zones, now this is going to be 74, 75. So there's only, I mean, you folks are only looking about four feet, if you're lucky, clearance between a semi that's 80,000 pounds going this way and a van going this way. Okay. <laughs> he knows what you drive. He knows what you drive. I know. I've seen her license plate. I, know. Yeah. <laughs> I heard she was a troublemaker. He's when got I came your in number. Here. <laughs> First one I came in here, they said that's the one, so I made sure I knew what she was. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably the one who stopped me on the Amico Road and said, slow down. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> and I said, I am slowing down, but... And, 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 uh, so, this sounds great in theory. Seven miles an hour, yes. Four feet. We all know the dangers of driving with the younger generation. Okay, I, I cannot count how many times in my personal vehicle I'm out driving and I see people I was just oh, going to say, texting. Yeah. Doing this number. Or they're, yeah. they're playing a game, they're doing something like this, and they're not watching the road. They're not watching what's going on in front of them. Okay, so now we're out here. We're doing 74. This one's doing 74 miles an hour. This one's doing 75 miles an hour. We have a crash. Okay, that's a lot of power to a party. Okay, 
I mean, uh, that's 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 a lot. That's a lot of uh, energy going on. Energy. Thank you. So with only four, you know, four or five feet uh, difference there on the two lane highways, it's, it's, I'm I'm worried. Just my personal opinion that our fatal numbers are going to go up. You know, that's that's just with eight years of experience of seeing this kind of stuff, what may happen. What had been the uh, the speed limit on a, on a two lane? Sixty five. Sixty five. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, and you know that doesn't sound like a lot, you know, but then you're going. Most people are doing seventy. Are now you? We're, now we're are they, have they put up signs? They have not yet. No, this just passed this last session. So what they are doing now is they're doing studies to figure out which roads uh, can handle seventy miles an hour. Well, what they need to do is not put them. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully that yeah. will go as long as possible. <laughs> now, so, and, but yeah. when does the law go into effect if you were uh, caught driving 70 or 71? I mean, just because you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, the new law, uh, they passed those, and all of our legislation takes effect July 1st. Ah. Okay, so July 1st, they, they are right now. Of why this not, year. Yes, why not is doing five. studies right now okay. to figure out which highways. Obviously, we don't want to have 70 on Highway 59, which is the road north of Douglas. Because, whew, yeah. that's a bad road anyway yeah. to start with. Oh, yeah. so it's not all It's not going to be all two lanes, no matter. Oh, no matter. I so, say select uh, two lanes. I'm sure the road to Shoshone is going to be 70 just because that is like the surface of the moon and there's nothing out there <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh antelope. You know, yeah antelope. <laughs> uh you know but uh like highway 59 i'm sure down on 220 which is the road to alcova not you know there's some certain areas where there's high amount of volume of traffic that we don't want to have that so they're doing uh until the signs change this is the same way with the 75 and the 80 mile per hour speed limit zones as soon as the sign changes then uh motorists can go that speed and not uh be pulled over, you know, incited or warned. You have to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, and a lot of times people say uh, out of staters will go from the interstate, get onto a two lane, and say, I thought it was still 80. No. <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. But and the guys in Cheyenne can uh, change that speed limit on I 980 now, can't they? They change well, it's bad weather and they can. Probably yes. Yes, and in fact, uh, in Casper, you're talking about the variable speed limit signs. Yes, which is good. Those things are those things have cut down crashes along the I-80 corridor tremendously. Uh, here in Casper, we're actually going to get some of those uh, through town. That uh, really? five mile stretch through town, which is like in the winter time, it's like ping pong, cars bouncing <laughs> in between <laughs> the guardrail, and I just cry and I want to go home because <sighs> it's like carnage. There's cars everywhere. Uh, but yeah, as soon as uh, in a couple of years, uh, I, gosh, what was it? I'm going to say either this winter or next winter, we're going to install variable speed limit signs through town, and then obviously that will, in theory, cut down yeah. on some of the crashes because knuckleheads still do 60 mile an hour when the roads icy and slushy. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. cool. With all of that, is there a minimum speed limit? I mean, suppose I'm on the I-80 and I want to go 20 miles an hour. You're going to stop me, aren't you? No, sir. No, sir, I am not going to stop you. There is no minimum speed limit. You can be on a bike, biking at three miles per hour. No minimum speed limit. You can't I didn't impede think bikes traffic. Were allowed. I didn't think bikes were allowed on you, the interstate. You can't impede traffic. So I can't get out there and... Yeah, yeah you, can't, you, can't take up all the, you can't take up the right lane and, and you know, on your, on your little moped or whatever, you can't impede traffic. Okay. But uh, yeah, there's no minimum speed limit, so... What, uh, to, uh, how should you adjust or it for a deer in the road or a raccoon or whatever how you know what's the hit it yeah <laughs> sorry go right for it try to dodge <laughs> it know, what sorry. that's that's a great question if we're doing 70 miles an hour and we see bambi jump out in front of us one thing we always tell people if bambi wants to commit suicide obliger yeah. don't swerve <laughs> exactly okay i'm not saying to push the pedal to the floor and try and hit her but don't swerve okay uh, and i know it's easier said than done because a lot of times that's your first reaction is you see that whoa, and you want to do that, but and that's that's, <laughs> and then you're, and then I get called and paperwork and you know it's sad and all that stuff. So we want to make sure that uh, if we see Bambi jump out in front of us, we don't want to swerve. If we can stop, great, but uh, if we need to hit her, that's why we have insurance.
and cars can be fixed. Okay, you know, if we swerve, then we go over, then we trip, and then that's the number one call, a car uh, crash we see in the state of Wyoming is a one vehicle rollover. Really? A lot of times, wow. yeah. A lot of times uh, it's from falling asleep. You know, there's not a lot out here in the middle of the night. We all know that. Uh, but, you know, right there is trying to avoid deer, avoid a raccoon, and any sorts of animals that, that jump out in front of us. So that's the number one crash that we have in the state of Wyoming is one vehicle rollover. Do you believe that or not? I have kind of a sad, funny story. Years ago, um, when I lived in Tennessee, um, I was a reserve deputy sheriff and also I was with the DA's office and we had four counties. And uh, of course everybody knew everybody because mm -hmm. some of them had uh, rented offices in our building. Um, like the TBI had their office in the DA's office and uh, to save money and and of course we knew the FBI agents and all this and the how we were driving you know I mean they were just kind of like family you know sure. and uh, so I was headed out the boss and his family were on vacation I had to go out and take care of the all these many animals and it was snowy and slick and really dangerous and I was creeping along and suddenly I saw a deer on the side of the road mm -hmm. so I'm slowing down and the deer just leaps and you talk about just smashing my van I had a van and uh but I mean it just took it and the glass and everything broke you know blew the tire but I was able to limp a few miles to his house and get to a phone but anyway um, so I called uh, my friend with the DA's office and uh, they said, well, well, we'll call dispatch and get Frankie, the, the highway patrol officer, to go out and we got the location of the dead deer and all that. I went out there and he said, well, you must be mistaken, there's no deer. So I said, we'll check the farmhouse right, you know, about a quarter mile from the site. They were skinning the deer. They had already, they had already got, they were having supper. I mean, they were bad. It was on the table being skinned. If you hit a deer, do you get to keep it? Well, you know, believe it or not, that's a great story because the state just passed that law. Yeah, you can eat roadkill. You can, yep, it used to be that you couldn't. But they just passed the law saying that you uh, can I sneak sure. out. A friend of mine said her mama that would, would wouldn't accept food stamps, but she fed the family by getting up early <laughs> uh, on foggy mornings oh. and getting the road kill. And I thought, whoo, please don't invite me to lunch. Yeah, you know. That's why I don't know if I would. That was, that was in New yeah. York. Yeah, oh. she loved those foggy mornings. Oh. So is that, different yes. Folks, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> so do you get to keep the deer if you hit it, or what's that? Yep, yeah, it's, uh, if you want to eat that, go right on ahead. Yeah. Well, know, I've only seen that once, that story, once in my career. I saw them out there skinning the deer, and that yeah. law had just passed. And, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Hope you don't get the worms, because that's nasty. Yeah. Oh. That's gross. Yeah. You know, that, 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 I really go down to Smith's and buy some food. There you yeah. are. I know. Right on. Yeah. I know. I just. Yeah, I just. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's not illegal. It used to be, but not anymore. So. Is falling asleep at the wheel a real big problem? It is. It is. Uh, unfortunately, you know, and we just had a crash uh, a couple days ago. A girl uh, worked uh, from 11 at night until 7 in the morning and then decided to drive to Douglas. Um, you know, she's only 19 years old, that under 25 age group we were talking about earlier, uh, fell asleep uh, just west of uh, Powder River uh, out there and uh, you know, one vehicle rollover, you know, she just fell asleep and, and off she went. Um, you know, we have, we tell, uh, tell people coffee, caffeine, energy drinks, all that stuff works for a while, but as soon as it wears off, you know, the crash is oftentimes worse than if you would not have had that. Um, so, you know, it's always good to have a plan, have another driver, uh, you know, if you need to stop those parking areas that you guys see along the highways, the interstates, it's not illegal to stop and take a nap. Okay, we'd actually rather have you do that huh. than have a crash. I thought those were only like for emergency things or that. Yep, nope, nope. Well, those parking areas, if you need to stop there, a lot of times people traveling through the state uh, will stop there, um, you know, and, and they'll 
they'll, they'll take a nap, which is, I'd rather have you do that than sleep while you're driving 80 miles an hour mm -hmm. on, the, on the interstate. So. Can you sleep in your car in a rest area? Yeah. Really? That's, that's, huh. yep. yeah, the only, uh, only parts you can't park at are along the regular uh, interstate. Those parking areas, great to park, great to sleep. Rest areas, great. You just can't pull, like if you're heading north up here by Ormsby Road, you can't just pull off to the side of the, or off the, side of the highway and, and take a nap. So take an exit, anything that's uh, not along the, the main route of travel. Mm -hmm. So great question. Um, okay, another big uh, law that was just passed uh, that had overwhelming support uh, from all the communities, legislatures, all that. Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard our slogan, but uh, it's the three feet with the bicycles. Okay, that's one yeah. thing that, yeah. that uh, you know, here in Casper we've had a real big issue. Um, unfortunately, in the town here we've had a lot of bicyclists hit. Um, so the, the slogan that we have, it's kind of cheesy, don't compete, give them three feet. Okay, so that's just a little thing on that. What about these um, people flying up and down the city streets and even on the interstate, believe it or not, I've seen it. Uh, ATVs. I was just amazed, of course, I've seen it for a couple sure. of years, but I could not believe that thing was flying down the interstate. Yep. Yeah, those, uh, a lot of those MPV, multi-purpose vehicles, uh -huh. uh, you know, those are perfectly legal to have if they meet all the requirements. I wouldn't ride one. You know, I don't want to be, Man. You know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to be scrambled eggs along the highway. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're right, they, they fly in cross yeah. rockets, those little motorcycles that you guys hear go up and down the, well, that's the only good thing about winter, it's no motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. Not as many. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, there, there's no safety precautions. They don't have the airbags. They don't have the crumple zones. They don't have all that stuff that's made to keep you safe in a vehicle. They don't have it on an ATV. They don't have it on a motorcycle. So when they crash, and they do, you know, they go flying, unfortunately. Which is why we harp seatbelt usage so much. Because that seatbelts, I mean, if you have a head on with the semi, there's not a lot of seatbelts going to do. Okay, but if you fall asleep and you roll, that seatbelt keeps you in there for all that stuff that's made to keep you safe to keep you safe. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But you have all your airbags go off. If you're not wearing your seatbelt, you know, you're, you're pitched out of the vehicle. But if you're in that seatbelt, it keeps all those airbags in there and it's keeping the stuff that's made to keep you safe working. So, you know, a seatbelt. Wyoming's not too, too heavy on a seatbelt. If I pull you over for a seatbelt ticket, it's 25 bucks. Okay, that's all it is. And it's not even a primary violation. If I see you out there, you're doing everything right, I can't even pull you over for not wearing your seatbelt. <laughs> That's the only law that we have that I can't do that for. Now, if you have a cracked windshield, or you're doing three miles an hour over, I can pull you over for that, and then write you this $25. Suppose I'm hitchhiking. You pull me over for that? Nope. Nope. In fact, they just passed that law as well. I thought so. Yep. Yep. Oh, on the interstate as well? Yep. Then yep. hitchhiking is totally legal. You're totally kidding. Legal. Yep. But it's probably not a good idea near Rollins and not to uh, uh, Riverton and uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you see if you see a guy out there with an orange jumpsuit from the state, <laughs> <Yeah. right. laughs> go ahead and call me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and give me a call now. Yeah, uh, yeah but uh, hitchhiking is uh, is totally illegal. You know, they, they have to abide by the same rules, the no minimum speed. They have to abide by those same rules and they have to walk, you know, the same uh, direction as traffic can go in and everything in that. They can't solicit a ride, so they can't go like this, but they can walk. Oh, they cannot do that. Correct. They can't solicit oh. a ride, but they can walk. Can they hold signs? Because I see that all the time. All the time. All the time. You know, they'll but say, that's you know. So that's soliciting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you going, do that. going to Billings or yep. wherever. Yep. But if you see a guy that's got his backpack on and he's got his doggy walking down the highway, totally good to go. Wow. Really? So, wow. Uh, we just had a guy, in fact, that was... Uh, Oh my gosh, we got so many calls on him. He was walking west across the state. So he started over by the Lusk area. We got calls on him all the time because during the day, he had a shopping cart with all his belongings. He didn't want to ride. He was Aww. just he was just walking, you know. And But he was sleeping during the day because it's so hot. And he would walk at night. And he had lights and he had everything, you know, to illuminate himself. You know, we got calls. There's a guy out walking. There's a guy out walking. He's okay. Hmm. It's, not, it's not illegal to do what he was doing. And you know, if I was going to walk across the state, I would do it at night as well because it's so hot. Yeah. 
So, you know, that's a, that's a good question on that. Yep. That's amazing. Totally, uh, totally illegal. Yep. yep. We have a lot of odd laws. So which store kind of has the best shopping carts <laughs> for that for across the state? He, he's in Riverton now. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I have had my full. <laughs> Check out about four times. Uh, like, okay, you're still good. All right. So you guys, uh, I mean, highway patrolmen, uh, you have territories. You do I-25 sure. around here mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, then somebody else in Douglas picks it up and takes the next run, etc., etc., all yep. the way down. We've got a lot of you guys. How many? Uh, in Casper, uh, which is where I've uh, obviously stationed at here, uh, we're responsible for the entire Natrona County. And so they're right now there's county. Okay. Yeah, there's currently eight troopers here. That's all we have is eight guys for this whole whole area. Wow. Now on any given day, there's probably only two or three of us out working. Okay. So we have a responsible for Midwest. We're responsible for Highland, we're responsible for Independence Rock, I-25, I-25, Casper Metro. Yeah. So we do have a lot of we do have a lot of people, you know, and there's just not a lot of us. So it's gonna sometimes it's gonna take us a while to get to you, but we're coming. You know, I mean there's unfortunately hopefully we'll be getting more guys, more uh, more spots to fill, just because you know, Casper, Casper Metro, the whole county, you know, you're looking at probably close to hundred thousand people by the time mm -hmm. you throw in Midwest, Edgerton, Natrona. All those little dinky areas, and then you have Casper Major, Mills, Evansville, Bar None, all these areas around here. There's just not, we have really good relationships with the deputies, which help us out a lot. The Toronto County Sheriff's Office, they do help us out. Um, but yeah, as far as troops go, you know, you're lucky if we have three of us out. Yeah. Well, most of your calls, I, I would guess, are for service or education sure. or that kind of stuff, right? Yep, yep. A lot of, most of the calls that we have are for service. Uh, we have a lot of crash, you know, a lot of, a lot of crash calls. Yeah, but uh, I'd say most, you know, traffic complaints, people calling in other drivers that are doing things wrong, uh, drunk drivers, we have a serious issue uh, with drunk driving in the state. Our average BAC, I'm not going to get too much into that, but uh, average BAC for the state of Wyoming is a .16. BAC, I don't know. Blood alcohol content. Thank you, BAC, thank you. <laughs> and that's, what is that, twice? That's twice the legal limit. Wow. Wow. That is, I, I wish you guys could see how bad that is. That's... That is stumbling, mumbling, that's bad. And that's the average? That's the average, yeah, that's about the average, it's a .16. Wow. Legal limit, if you're over 21, it's .08. That's nationwide. Okay, if you got a DUI in Maine, if you got a DUI in Wyoming, if you got a DUI in Florida, .08 is what the legal limit is. Okay, so now you take this .16, this average blood alcohol content, and you're dri here driving mm -hmm. 70 miles an hour. <laughs> you see you see where we keep going back to this? Yeah. This four feet? That's where we keep going back to that. So that's what's the highest you've ever seen on some of my personal was a four seven. Oh my like word. Four seven. Still Isn't that pretty close to death? Uh, yeah. He's still conscious? Yeah. It, uh, I'll tell a little war story. He was so drunk, he was just north of town on the interstate in that construction area. And he was, uh. and the uh, people working in the construction, the flaggers, he was so drunk that they had a stop sign and they just had him stopped until we got there. He didn't. He didn't keep going. He, he had him stopped. Wow. <laughs> they were able so to stop him. They were able, yeah, because I mean, he was, you know, he was. He saw the stop sign yeah. from the flaggers, and, and he just stopped until we got there, because he was all over the road. And How much was, alcohol do you have to consume to hit that, that? That's a lifelong alcoholic. Okay, that's somebody that's tolerance level is, wow, is super high. Because I mean, if if you or I did that, oh, we couldn't get that high. Okay, we couldn't get that high. But that's years and years and years. And Mm -hmm. The .16, how much does it usually take to get to reach that? You know, that, uh, you know alcohol is a weird, uh, a weird drug because it's so much depending on your body height, mm -hmm. your gender, uh -huh. your weight. Um, you know, I mean, that's probably... And your tolerance. And your tolerance level. Yeah. Yeah, some people function. They have to function at this. Alcoholics have to function at this level or else they start having detox and they start shaking and getting sick and everything. So there are some people out there that function at this level. And they're, you know, they can do all my roadside Olympics great. They can pass all the tests. Wow. Know, because that's how they function. But, you know, I mean, if it was you or I, I don't, we probably couldn't even get to that. Hmm. You know, I would be, I would be asleep. Yeah. If I get to that, because we're cops and we're nerds sometimes when we do have some alcohol, portable breathalyzer, we test each other. 
because we're nerds. <laughs> and, you know, if we're there, we're, we're yeah. no way I would drive a vehicle like that. Yeah. You know this is being recorded. I right? do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we say the same thing to all of our classes. Because <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're people too, you know, I mean, we do that, but we're nerds. <laughs> Any so, questions? Anything questions? like that as we're... Uh, new legislation? Uh, I want to know about the school that I can take here every twice a month. Highway Patrol gives us a, a safe driving class. Is that not correct? Uh, I don't know if it's Highway Patrol. It's okay. Fridays. Uh, Maybe it's not Highway Patrol. Second Friday or second and fourth Friday, 9 o'clock and 1 o'clock, I think okay. it is. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. you don't know about it, so maybe it's not about it. You know, so but uh, if you ever need us, obviously, we can yeah. definitely make that happen. Because yeah. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. We enjoy getting classes like this. And yeah, once so. you uh, get a certificate, don't you get a reduction in your um, driving insurance? You might. I probably won't. But you might. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to give me any deductions. <laughs> yeah, but 50. he's already said that you look young, so. <laughs> 55 alive, Dan, I think yeah. is what they call it. 55 alive, yes, yes, Mark. I like that. I like that. Oh. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, officer. I appreciate that.